Hey guys, stay tuned to the end of the video for your chance to win a Star Citizen game package that includes the all new Drake Vulture Salvage Vessel. We'll be seeing a lot of that ship in this video and as an added bonus, the prize also comes with lifetime insurance. The prize was very kindly provided to us by COG to give away to one lucky viewer. Again, full details to follow at the end of the video. So it's safe to say that the launch of Star Citizen 318 has been a bumpy road with a lot of problems ongoing for many players. And indeed it took several days for us to be able to get into game for any appreciable length of time. CIG have been hard at work ironing out the problems this week though and while there was still a lot of work to do we were able to get into the game and get on with some adventuring in 318. We had always planned to begin a Life Aboard series featuring the Reclaimer, a chance to really live with the new salvage mechanics and see how well they support a full crew. But we we do know now that a partial wipe is incoming and so getting on with a persistent series would have to wait for the time being. We have been told though that credit balances will carry over through the wipe and so heading out to attempt some salvage was still an attractive proposition for the crew. If credits are all that we take with us, well then it spells out an implied objective to make as much as you can before the wipe. We were setting out from Grim Hex, heading for Hurston L3 Lagrange Cloud to see what we could find. Nice. It wouldn't be until I'd already left the hangar that Cyrus and Vlaz would come aboard. Uh, I'm below into your starboard side. We'd arrived at the bright green nebula of Hurston L3 and we'd immediately begin the search for ships and loose panels suitable for salvage. And we would quickly find our first salvageable panels with Vlad's being the first to spot them. Slowing down. We've got a couple actually, there's four or five pieces here. Two above and then three below. We'll go for the big ones above first, we'll work our way downwards. Just gonna bring us around to the front side of it. Let me know when you guys are good. Salvage had begun and the filler stations were filling up very quickly. Sorry, ducking the first one. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arathorn, we need you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to make it there. Yep, mine's ejecting already. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Now, there were three of us on board with Cyrus and Vlaz on the salvage beams, but this meant nobody was below decks managing the filler stations. Okay, I'm actually going to go down and make a track to me myself. God damn, that was so fast. I, like, that was shocking. Yeah, absurdly fast. My plan was to head below decks and run the filler stations, but there is kind of a problem with the reclaimer at the moment. The elevator often just does not work. It cannot be called or moved from seemingly any deck. This makes entering the salvage processing deck difficult and inconvenient, and other decks like the cargo hold impossible. Well, there is a way in, but we need a tractor beam. Has anyone got a tractor beam? Uh, I do not. We were heading for the very back of the ship where a cargo hatch can grant access to the deck below salvage processing. This has its own challenges because the onboard gravity kicks in making it difficult to actually get inside. But from here I was certain that someone could be stunned and tractor beamed up into salvage processing. It's almost like a force field bounced me back out. Right. I oh there you it. go. Good work. Good work. Okay. I'm try okay I'm in. I'm in. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way of climbing up there or not. You, at the sides here, there's like these ramps, but they're quite steep, unfortunately. All right, uh, attempting to call the elevator from the crew deck doesn't really work. No, the elevator seems to be right here. Without a track to be in, we're not going to be able to get somewhere. We have to, we're going to have to go to a station. That's what we have to do. We have to go to the station and buy a track to be in. 
luckily, I mean, we are close to a station, right? Safe. I'm glad this is G safe next to me. But you see, it was me flying the ship, and while diverting my attention to get this awesome external shot for the video, I let us get a little too close before breaking. Oh, oh. Can we break? Can we break? Oh no. Oh no. No, no. Oh, oh. Hey, you guys ah. left me in the pilot seat. It's always a 50 50 chance. <laughs> So we were coming back to the same station to collect what little salvage we had and also now to salvage the old reclaimer, the wreck we'd left behind. This was all within the station's armistice zone as well, so there were some unanswered questions to solve. Now, if we salvage in armistice, are we allowed to do that? I don't think so, but let's try it anyway. Okay, it's not a weapon, it shouldn't be a problem. Progress was fast, but the same problem would need to be solved. We needed someone below deck to run the filler station. Oh, I got it. Okay. Oh, you got it. You got it. And takedowns were not working. It's middle mouse. I know, I rebounded. And only when I tried myself did I realize what our mistake was. We're oh, wait, we're in armistice. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> So we were reversing out of the armistice zone when we get a lucky accident number two. Oh, what the hell? Oh. What, what was that? What the hell happened? Cyrus had been moving one of the boxes we'd recovered from our old ship and it had collided with the ship while moving. The reclaimer has some very difficult problems to work around right now, specifically that elevator. It really is a huge hindrance to the ship. So far we'd been out twice but it made zero profit. It was time to take things back to basics with the Vulture, and with 318 now live, the Vultures of Stanton could enjoy several new looks. I was returning to Hurston L3 to fill the ship just once for safety. That way I'd have at the very least made some profit, no matter what our next crazy idea was. And once again I was lucky to find a collection of scrap panels not long after arriving. I was using the efficient beam to get as much out of the panels as possible, but even with the slower speeds, the cargo base soon began to fill. Now, I have had trouble during PTU with extra boxes in the cargo bay, the ones that are not on the cargo grid, not registering to be sold when at a trade terminal. They seem to vanish from the ship anyway, so I wasn't going to take the time to collect more on this trip, just a quick full cargo bay for a modest profit. The destination was Art Corp, where I'd be making the sale at Area 18. This was my first visit to Area 18 in the Live 318 servers, and when I made it down to the tram station, I was surprised to see that the traffic was adopting quite an unusual alignment in its traversal of the highway.
Once inside the trade division, I'd occupy a trade terminal and wait to see how much I could get from this haul. So all in, I made about 100k for this run, which brought my credit balance back above the initial starting payout at the very least. But I was not done and now I had an idea. We'd left a lot of material out there on those panels because we didn't have the space on board to carry it all. But if I could bring out one of my transport ships like the Caterpillar alongside the Vulture, well then space is no longer an issue. As I was on my own I'd need a Gravlev bike to move between them while prospecting and both ships would be extremely vulnerable with just me out there. Nobody else was available at this time to help out. So I'd need to pick a location that was guaranteed to be dead quiet. That location would be the Microtech L3 Lagrange point, the edge of the Stanton system, and so far from everything that nobody ever has a reason to go there. But during my jump I was having concerns about even me getting there. Fuel was already looking low and there was a lot of jump still to go. I'd made it to the nebula of Microtech L3 a beautiful cloud with a vivid and bright cyan colouring. The quantum drive was running on fumes, but there was one more short jump to make. I could see a scattering of rock, but would I find salvage out here? As I approached the station, I would check with pings at my radar that I was alone. Things did seem very quiet out here. I'd be landing on the pads because I needed to pull extra ships for my plan. The limit on the number of ships you can have out at any time has been removed. Up until recently it was three ships or vehicles at once, but now players can pull as much of their fleet as they need to. This is a very nice change and would actually come in handy today. On the station, I'd first set my regen point here. I didn't want to have to make that flight again if something went wrong. And then I would buy some supplies. So to make this plan work, I'd need a dragonfly and my caterpillar. I'd fly out and find the salvageable panels with the vulture, with the dragonfly carried along in the cargo bay. Once I find them, I take the dragonfly out of the vulture, fly it back to the caterpillar and bring the caterpillar out to the vulture. But there was a problem I had not expected. The small hangers here are vertical hangers. This was a problem. The dragonfly has a bit of a bounce when you start it up, but nowhere near enough to get me up and out of those doors. The best I could think of was to fly the vulture down into the hangar with the dragonfly still in there, and then try to load the dragonfly onto the ship before they were both stored. The way I saw it, if they got stored once the dragonfly was in, well, when I pulled the vulture again, the dragonfly should still be inside. This would solve my problem. You are blocking an active flight bay. Please vacate the vicinity. Initiating ship storage procedure. For your safety, please vacate the area. Ship storage procedure. For your safety, please vacate the area. Thank you for your cooperation. Welcome to the ASOC Vehicle Retrieval System. The terminal looked good, the vulture could be recovered, but the dragonfly was a claim. This was a good sign. Missing ship storage procedure. For your safety, please make a... But when I pulled the vulture... Cooperation. I did think of taking off carefully and getting the dragonfly off the roof outside, but by the time I could do anything, the dragonfly was already stored. So I bit the bullet, 
pulled a cutlass and set off back for civilization to pick up a dragonfly around Salin. Signs of Pez littering were obvious to Terra Mills. Back at the station with the cutlass and dragonfly on a pad, I'd recover the vulture and get ready to take the dragonfly. And at last, we were set to begin our prospecting of Mick L3. Pretty soon, I realised that the chain of rocks between the two was the best place to look, and set course for some of the truly huge rocks visible from hundreds of kilometres away. And there, I did find a group of panels to be salvaged. I was about 80 kilometers from the station. There would be some flying for this freshly painted dragonfly, but we were now ready to pull the caterpillar and link up with our vulture. I no longer had the marker for the vulture, but the huge rock serves as a very good landmark to guide you. With the vulture found, it was time to head aboard. There are still some problems with EVA at this time. The excessive spinning when you enter EVA and the complete lack of free look are both still to be resolved. Now we were in a prime position to salvage every one of these panels. We were already looking good with more than 12 boxes aboard, but now another problem had emerged. The vulture was no longer extracting salvage, the beams were melting the panels, but we weren't pulling anything in towards the next box. It took me a few moments to notice, but this was a potentially difficult problem. I tried a couple of things, getting out of the seat and back, cycling salvage mode, cycling salvage modules, nothing concrete emerged as a solution. But when I moved on to another panel, I could extract salvage again.
However, after a few boxes, the problem of extraction returned. Being seemingly unable to pull in more salvage, I decided to use the time to begin unloading onto the caterpillar for the first time. This would at least free up space aboard the vulture if the beams began working correctly again. Back on board the Vulture, I needed to take in sustenance before getting back to trying to salvage these panels. After the break filling the caterpillar, the beams were again working correctly. But after a couple of boxes, I once again was unable to really extract any material despite the panels visibly melting and the head telling me they were valid targets. I was also running out of time for the day to investigate this problem and so decided to cut things short and load the caterpillar. Then I would leave the vulture at the panels here and head back to sell the salvage. Because I already had the dragonfly on board, I could return later to continue if I wished. And while not as big a profit as I was hoping to make, I'd still make a nice gain when I sold off what I had. Now before heading into town, I wanted to make sure that all of the cargo was securely attached. Again in PTU I had issues with items not registering to be sold if they were not on the cargo grid, so I went back and did a quick check on the cargo. Once again at the trade terminals it was time to see just what we brought back. The count of 17 was disappointing but at this point there was nothing to be done. Still it was 130k profit and right after a wipe that is nothing to turn your nose up at. A lot more happened during the two days of salvage that we committed to, but the video was getting to a length, it felt like it needed to be split in two, or maybe even into three parts. So in the next video we'll see how well this can work when you bring along a couple of extra people to help. I am glad I gave it a go solo though, just so now I know it can be set up quite easily. I just hope that the kinks in the salvage system can be ironed out. I mentioned at the start of the video that we are giving away a Drake Vulture game package that includes a copy of Star Citizen and a Vulture with lifetime insurance. Well, for your chance to win, just drop a like and a comment on the video and we will pick a winner at random in the next 48 hours. And I want to thank CIG for sending us such a cool prize to give away. We will also be running another giveaway in the week, so you will have another chance to win a game package with an LTI ship then too. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Without these generous people, none of the videos on the channel would be possible and I am enormously grateful to each and every one of you for the help. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Solo1, who recently became a backer of the channel over on Patreon, and Thomas C, who recently increased his pledge support to the channel. Thank you guys, you are both amazing. We'll be back with more Salvage gameplay from 318 Live very soon.